now you've got this faction of people that are just forgetting the the recent past and now you've got to trade up for Tua and it's the part I don't understand with Dolphin fans is don't you want a great football team you watch Dan Marino oh I'm sorry it's a long time ago some of us watch Dan Marino there's a whole bunch of you that did not see Dan Marino. You did not see the Dan Marino era. You didn't live it, so you don't know it. And that we've had, like, different stages, okay, with the Dolphins. And when you had the Woodstock stage, all right, let me, let me go back to Greasy. When you had the Greasy stage, you had a running game. You had an offensive line. You had a number one wide receiver, a superstar wide receiver, in Paul Warfield. So you had this incredible balance that you can you can tra- you can Derrick Henry it all the time and occasionally pass it. And they did that. And it was successful because that's what you can do. Fast forward to the early 80s. You end up with Woodstock. And for you young Dolphin fans that are in love with this whole Tua thing, I want you to listen. I want you to pay attention because this is a Dolphin history that I want you to, le- to learn about. Because it's something I lived and watched. And that's the difference. I, You know, it sucks to get old because you get gout and you get uh, kidney stones. And, you know, it's a, you suffer setbacks. But the one good thing about being old is you have perspective. And you get to Woodstock and you got a pretty good line. You got a heck of a defense. But you didn't have the quarterback, right? You did, yeah, you had the serviceable quarterback that can make some plays. And then you had the lucky part of the strike and all that and Shula's a great coach and he could coach up Bill to run for a thousand yards in a strike scab season you know because that's just Shula it's really not Bill's skills because he has none it's really more about Shula you know just kind of disguising it and making Bill look a lot better than he really is you know what I mean so you end up doing that and you end up having success but you didn't really win it because you didn't have the right combination like you did in the 70s then you get Dan Marino and you think, wow, kid comes off the bench against Oakland, kicks ass. Then the following year, takes over the league, throws for 5,000 yards and the 48 touchdowns and all that stuff, and they get to the Super Bowl, and they lose. And why did they lose? Because the San Francisco 49ers had a great quarterback, but they also had a great running back. They also had great receivers. They had a great tight end. They had a great line, and they had a great defense. They had balance. So they could throw the ball if they wanted to. They can run it. They can throw it to Roger Craig. They can kill you down the middle of the field with Dwight Clark. I I can go on and on. And their defense with Ronnie Lott and all those guys, they can make plays. Balance. Miami didn't have balance. They were imbalanced because it was just Marino and a couple of receivers and a good line. No running game, no defense. It was all Dan, and he had to make sure he outscored what the defense allowed every week, and that wasn't going to always happen. And when you get to the postseason where you got to be tougher, you got to be better in every stage, they could not elevate their game. So you move forward, right? And you have a broken down Marino, an older Marino with Jimmy Johnson. Your defense was decent, your offensive line was serviceable. Your running game was average to mediocre. You didn't get anywhere. You got to the playoffs. You had a great coach, but not enough. You go on to Jay Fiedler. Great defense, right? At times, a great running game. Occasionally, a decent line. More often than not, it was a mediocre line. And Jay Fiedler was an average to mediocre quarterback. Average on his best day, mediocre sometimes, not a guy that was going to carry a team. Didn't have the right combination. Let's fast forward again. Let's go to the seven years of Ryan Tannehill. Okay? Now you got Ryan Tannehill. He can't elevate your team. Occasionally you had a running game. Occasionally you had some Pro Bowl offensive linemen playing on his line. Occasionally you get some play on defense. Never the right combination. 
you didn't have the kind of quarterback like Marino that could elevate everybody, even over the crap, because that's what Marino was able to do a lot of times, elevate over crap. Tannehill didn't always have crap at times. He had some Pro Bowl guys online. He had, he had once in a while, he would have a decent running game. Once in a while, he had decent receivers in the second half of his career here. Early on, I know the first year or two, you know, the receivers weren't great, but whatever. But it wasn't the right combination. So let me ask you something. You end up trading a whole bunch of picks to move up to get Tua. Then what are you going to put around him? 